Thank you very much to have me. Uh, I just want to add that I'm living in Kibbutz Abot Habashan. I'm married to Rachela. She's a kindergarten teacher. I have four sons and uh, five grandchildren. And uh, it's honored to, for me to be here uh, to, to this afternoon with you. You know, in Israel, it's already evening. And uh, I will try to give you, I would say, a short brief uh, about our situation here and also to include some of the chronicle uh, events that uh, brought us to this point in the time. And then if you have some questions, I'll be more than happy uh, to answer. So uh, on Shabbat, October 7, at 7.30 in the morning, we already activated the Council Emergency Headquarters and activate the alert teams at the emergency headquarters in all of our kibbutzim. Actually, we declared a war and began to act accordingly. On Saturday night, we called on the resident, those who are not needed in the kibbutzim, to evacuate, because we do understand and uh, uh, expect that the Hezbollah will join this war. Uh, the call to evacuate was due to the danger of the lives of the residents in, in a war event in North, initiated by Hezbollah or the IDF. And uh, we didn't know exactly what is happening. So we asked them to evacuate. And uh, also a main uh, reason why we've done so is out of the understanding that the army must be allowed maximum flexibility to act in this region. In the first week, around 75 up to 80 percent of the residents of the council, about 18 thousands out of 23 thousands, evacuated. And since we were the first municipality to evacuate residents, we managed to evacuate them, I would say, to relatively convenient places, another kibbutzim, some hotels, some uh, uh, resorts. That's, uh, the, the idea is that we can evacuate them together as a communities. Two weeks later, around October 25, the state decided to support the evacuation of residents from 14 of the council's 29 kibbutzim, uh, creating a harsh reality in which some of the evacuees received state support and some did not. It means that they already uh, uh, not in their houses, but nobody is paying for actually for the living there. Uh, not like most of those that evacuate and supported by the government. Today, almost five months since the war began, about 11,000 residents of out of uh, 23,000 residents of the council are evacuated. I would say that around 9,000 with state support, about 2,000 without the state support. Uh, about, I would say, 4,000 are staying in the hotels because, you know, to be with a family with teenagers with two, three kids in a one or two hotel rooms is not so convenient. So about 4,000 of them, of those 11,000 are staying in the hotels and 7,000 already have found their own independent solution, rent houses or whatever. In terms of economic uh, small businesses are closed or have moved elsewhere. Actually, there is no agriculture, no tourism. Many companies that have been established here in the, in the last decades have left. With the help of the funds we raised, we established welfare and education systems for the evacuees, alongside adapting the existing systems in the council communities. We instructed dozens of shelters, <coughs> excuse me, we instructed dozens of shelters that will be adapted as kindergartens and classrooms because we wasn't allowed to have some, any kinds of educational activities unless it's in a shelter. We established and equipped preparatory classrooms all around, either here in this area and for those who evacuated. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, our biggest challenge these days 
is to keep in touch with all the residents of the council and manage about 70 communities instead of 29, because each hotel or each kibbutz they evacuate is a new uh, community in, in a way, and to make sure that everyone receives the best possible level of services. The great challenge when we're looking ahead is despite the uncertainty to give some kind of, uh, I would say, final picture to the events, to the war, and some kind of timetable. We owe it to our residents, and uh, it's, it's, it's more than that. This is what will give the ability and desire of our residents to return home, to continue to increase the growth and the development that we have created here over the past decade. To bring them home, uh, in terms of security, we accept, uh, uh, we, we accept that the two, I would say, main threats is direct missiles fire. That's uh, it's something new in this war, uh, uh, fight, uh, uh, shooting a direct missiles fire and a terrorist penetration into Israeli territory. Those two threats, we are asked, we are demand uh, the state and the IDF to make their best to remove those two uh, threats from our life. Uh, that's the, the, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, will be responsible for Hezbollah not being able to operate in the area close to the border. We are not trust either in Unifil or the Southern Lebanon Army to do so. We are asking our government that in any kind of agreement, the one that will be responsible for the first 2, 5, 10, 15 kilometers near the northern border to the north into Lebanon, the uh, one that's in charge to, to uh, the execute of, of the agreement will be the State of Israel by the IDF and not anyone else. In addition to those two, I would say, uh, security uh, things that we are asking, the, we, we do expect that economic uh, plan with a dedicated significant budget for the recovery of the North and the ability to continue growth and development. I think uh, that you are, as an American, and especially if you are from New York, you are familiar with the phrase, when it's getting tough, the tough gets going. So we are tough and we will get going. I would say that our working assumption is that late May or early June, and there is many reasons, if you would like, I, I can uh, speak about it, but there are many reasons that bring us to this kind of working assumption that late May, we will have a kind of agreement with Lebanon, between Israel and Lebanon. And Lebanon, it means the Hezbollah. And hopefully during June, we will start our journey back home. And uh, if needed to put our expectation our goal in one sentence is that we look forward to, to the upcoming school year starting here at the Upper Galilee. This is what we are aimed, this is our goal. And for be in a position that we can start the next schooling year here in, 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 in North, in up north, we should start to come back to our houses, to our kibbutzim, to rebuild, to reconstruct, and, and uh, to be ready for it. So the idea is, or then our goal, our plan, is to start the, the, the coming back home uh, around late May or early June, and uh, July, August will be the month that we will uh, arrange ourselves, arrange our schools, our kindergartens, but the idea is that everyone, including the, the families with young kids, will come home and will start the next school year here at the up north. So this is basically, uh, again, brief of where we are right now. And uh, I'll be more than happy to answer if you have some question or remarks, whatever. So first of all, Kira, thank you so much for the, the update and, and everything you do. You know, we, we certainly hope that that Lebanon agreement that you mentioned uh, comes to fruition. And you know how uh, important the Upper Galilee area is to the JNF. 
how much we've done up there, we'll continue to do. And, um, you know, we do have, uh, we try to support the small businesses up there with our online uh, marketplace. Um, has um, m most of the uh, shop owners, have they been able to get through this difficult period? And is there anything more that you can tell us that, that you'd like the JNF to to do. First of all, uh, maybe I should start. I, I should start with it, but I, I I keep it for the end. I I have to to not just to say thank you because to say thank you it's not enough. Uh, I think that the Jewish and Jewish people around the world is is one entity. Maybe the soul or the heart is a set of Israel. But you are the Jewish people all around the world. You are the body. You are the bones. You are the flesh of of of, of the Jewish entity. So this kind of partnership, uh, and I, I can I have to say that I, I don't see it as only as a support, but as this partnership, uh, your representative in Israel. I don't want to say names because I would I know that you will be embarrassed, and and your president that uh, and your delegations. Unfortunately, in the last few months it's, it was very very hard to come here, but. Until now, uh, your delegation, the people that came here to up north and, and talk with us and show their em empathy, and of course, your support, in, in, in it, it's, it's much more than the dollars themselves, because each dollar that you gave us, actually, is kind of a seed money for a big project that we've done here. And even in this uh, terrible f five months that we already uh, passed, your support is, is grateful, and thank you very, very much. And there are many, many things in terms of bringing the education back to our schools because we need uh, uh, to, to invest big money. Uh, and, and some of this, it's, uh, the money that you gave us helps us to build those kind of schools for the people that evacuees in other places. So the, the range of needs, is, it's, it's huge. And uh, it will be even bigger uh, when we will come home back again uh, around June. And I think the most important thing is to support the uh, uh, education uh, to, to help us with some kind of uh, shelters, with, with some uh, improvement to the kids, because it's not enough to say to our people, please come home. We should give them the reason. We should give them the incentive. And if we can create even a better uh, uh, facilities, if we create a better programs for them, then we'll show them it's it's for you, it's good to come back. It's not only uh, because we must, but we try to do our best that they will want, that they will be desired to come back. And uh, with your help, we can do it. Well, you can you can count on us. And as you know, in Kiryat Shimona, we're building the Culinary Institute, and uh, there, there's a lot uh, that that we plan to do, and and we'll bring back more tourism. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. And I do hope to see you face to face, to hug you, to shake your hands. Uh, thank you very, very much for every one of you, to your support, to even to, to have this time to speak with me. For us, it's very important. And from our municipality, from the north of Israel, from all the people that's living here, thank you very, very much. We do appreciate a lot. What we are, what you are doing, the way you are doing it, and really, we are cannot wait to see you personally, hopefully soon in Israel. So thank you very, very much.